I'm Melissa Nielsen. Hello. That's Eric Nielsen. I wanted to have like dad's perspective because I think holding the space is a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we have, we've done this training program before. It's like a free video and maybe we'll have to do it again this summer called Straight Talk About Your Kid's Bad Behavior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and often when we're doing that, what comes out is that um, the bad behavior is, is always tied to mom and dad. Okay. Holding the space. Holding the space. Do your kids like, um, this, this is the best way for me to explain holding the space. Everything's going nice, nobody's fighting, and then the phone rings and you pick it up and you start talking on it. And then everything goes to hell in a handbasket. That's because your energy went away. Mm -hmm. So holding the space is about like your energetic presence. And, um, and that's not something woo woo because everything is energy. That's like scientific. <laughs> so um, when your energy is withdrawn from that space of like being with them, they feel it. And because they're little people and they don't know how to articulate it, it often comes out in like punching their brother or mm -hmm. somebody falls or the dog throws up or like everything's like goes crazy. And sometimes they do something that you would have never thought any human mind would comprehend that that would be a thing to do. There are rules that I have made <laughs> in my parenting that I thought to myself, I cannot believe these words are coming out of my mouth. <laughs> like, and we won't embarrass anybody today. No, but we won't. You can all probably think of something. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we have five children. There's never a dull moment in our house. And I, there have been times when I've gone, I have said, I can't believe I had to just tell you, you can't do that. Why would you do that to begin with? Um, but you know, being able to laugh at yourself as a parent is, is I think a uh, recipe for a happy life. Mm -hmm. So make sure you laugh at yourself enough. But holding the space is this, um, this concept that when you are energetically present, and that means you're not just, you're, it's not just your body's there because you can't be on your phone and hold the space. You can't be deep into a novel and hold the space. You can't be listening to a podcast and holding the space. Holding the space means that you are energetically present. Doesn't mean you have to be playing with them because moms will say to me often like, do I have to play with my kids all day? I'm like, hell no, you don't have to do that. <laughs> no, don't do that. In fact, that sets them up for failure. I think when you're constantly playing with them, you have to give them that space to understand how to play. Yes. And, um, and I think that often children, um, it, it, if they've had too much media and that can, I mean, too much media for one child is nothing to somebody else, but yeah. certain temperaments, if they've had too much media, then they kind of forget how to play and you have to sort of go on a media diet and remind them how to play. Well, one of the biggest indications to me is when it's time to turn that off and the there's media, anger. There's anger. Then it's Tantrums. like, okay, that's an indication that they had way too way much, much if they're that mad about it. And uh, so, I mean, that's when I know I mean, there's other things that tell you they've had too much, and there's certain rules of thumbs that's good sure, to follow. Sure, absolutely. But if it's, okay, if you anger. got five minutes and it's off, and then five minutes passes and it goes off, and they're like, uh, yeah. like that, then it's like, okay. And I think there's a couple of things to remember with the time warning. Yeah. So, like, one, children don't really understand the passage of time until they're in about second grade. And so, 10 minutes to a, to a five or six or even seven year old. It's not the same thing as 10 minutes to no, you or I. No. And so you want to be really careful about, um, I, yeah, I mean, usually we say it's going to go off when this episode is over or, um, you know, or something along those lines. So that you, you are giving the expectation um, and, and if it's time, if it's a child that can understand the, the passage of time. But I have seen older children have tantrums and I go, excuse me? Well, <laughs> what was have, that all about? I mean, then you have things like Netflix where if you're saying, it's so okay I to have watch a tantrum this. About Netflix. You, you can watch this and then you need to be done and then it's like, if you're busy, this, right. that so, starts up again, the next one and the next one and they're like. Well, because Netflix is really crafty. In doing. 13 seconds, another episode is playing. So you want to be like, you want to be careful. If you are using media at all to help you get something done, and that, I'm not a proponent of that, like at all. I would say, figure out a way to get it done with them. Have them come and help you for sure. But I know that the reality for some parents, as they are stepping away from media more and more, is that they are using it at, at certain periods of the day. So here's the thing. Most children's shows 
lasts between 17 and 22 minutes. Look at how long it is. It's a great little like, when you push pause, it'll tell you how many minutes are left. So then your job is to set your watch or to pay attention. And if, you are, if you're using the TV as a babysitter for 12 minutes, then you go get everything done that you need to get done in 12 minutes and come back and be present. Being present That's is super important. That's a good point too. Um, like this mom Caitlin says, food. Caitlin says, my daughter doesn't get mad when we turn it off or take away the screens, but definitely doesn't know how to keep herself entertained. So I think that, um, it, Caitlin, is she an only child? I think there's definitely um, differences when you've got, uh, because we have, we don't have, we have five children, so we don't have the only children situation, but we have gaps, yeah. big gaps between the last two for sure. So there were definitely periods of time when it wasn't working for one child to play with the other. And so, you know, those children had to learn how to, yeah, she says yes, one and done. They have to learn how to um, sort of entertain themselves. There are lots of things that I would consider. Um, our youngest loves handwork, and she has for a long time. She loves painting and drawing. And so I have always had those materials out for her. Like, she's been, she's been painting since she was probably two or three. Mm -hmm. um, like, by herself, on her own. She can get the paper. She has a paint palette, and we actually have a video on, um, you know, art supplies for young children. So if you need it, I can hook you up with that. But um, she she can go get it herself. She knows how to rinse her paintbrush and all of that, and gets it gets it herself and paints on her own. So I have left the those spaces open for her, so that she can do those things on her own. She also is like likes to help. So, you know, she'll, she'll find things to do that are helpful. Or if I need to be sitting at the table and it's not something that she can actually do to help, I will suggest something that she can do. You know, come and sit next to mommy. Why don't you go get your crayons and come and sit next to me while I'm doing this, you can do that. You're still holding the space because you're energetically there still. Um, but where, where the problem ends, uh, begins is when you, you start to check out and then, not only do they not know how to entertain themselves and they're struggling with that, but then um, th because they feel that energetic separation, they don't know what to do with it. And they, that's, it, and it's not just when naughtiness happens, it's when, um, you know, accidents happen, it's when they start to fall apart, it's they're, they're having a struggle because they need that energetic um, piece from you. At least until seven, then it starts to, that sort of um, etheric bond starts to change a bit. But then they need, they can't hold the space on their own until they're a teenager. And even then, certain temperaments are better at it than others. I think that's part of what we're teaching them. You know, we're not raising children, we're raising adults. We want, we're, because if we we're raising children, we would just be teaching people how to be children. We're teaching people how to eventually be adults in a very developmentally appropriate way. So you want to be very... Um, sort of, you know, a concerted effort and you're, you're deciding how to do it. I do want to say moms and dads hold the space differently. Yeah. Which is why he's here. Well, I... <laughs> dads, I think, have to, I think often dads will rely yeah. on, at least in our culture today, they'll pull out their phone. Yeah. So oh, and and Lauren that. says, I have an only child and I can see this being an issue and I see how easy it is for my kid to be occupied with other kids around well, I, one example I can think of of how we hold the space differently is I remember I was out running errands and I called you on the phone because I we were discussing what I was trying to find. Today? No, like a while oh, back. Oh, okay. And I just had Soraya. Well, when she, when I'm alone with her, she has this idea that when the car stops, she's going to unbuckle and she's oh, going to yeah. get out of her seat. And she wouldn't do that to you, but she I was talking on the me. phone and... Um, the next thing I know, she's flipping over the front drive, the front passenger seat, <laughs> lands on something and breaks it. And you were like, why was she even doing that in the car? And it's like, I don't I know. I was on the phone and she just does it. And right. There are things <laughs> that I think that there are things that children would never dream to do with mom. And there are things that they would never dream to do with dad. Like yeah. ever. Yeah. And, um, in, in that's just a, a, a testament to the strong bond you have with your children, that you and your partner have a different bond. Mm -hmm. And I actually really love that. I really love that 
if I'm holding the space with the kids and, and it's just us and we're, you know, we're not doing school and, and there's no media going, we're just hanging out, I'm likely just going to be sitting there knitting and they're going to be talking to me. We might be listening to a story. We, but if dad's holding the space, with them, they're, you know, they're more apt to say, let's play a game, let's do, you know, so they're, because he holds it differently and he brings a different energy to it. I, I think that um, to help dads get away from like, what do I do with them when I'm holding the space? Because we hear so much, often we hear, well, I'm babysitting and I go, you're not babysitting. That is not what it's called when you're with your child. <laughs> you're called you're parenting. Called parenting. Yeah. So you have to like put tools in your toolbox. And I think that that's appropriate for mom and dad because I think often moms also don't know how to hold the space. So they go, well, what do I do? They're just playing. That doesn't mean you should retreat no. into your phone or because that's what happens is when you do retreat into your phone, um, that's, when, that's when stuff happens. Even our children who are pretty well trained that if I'm on my phone, I try to hide. It's because I'm answering a work question. Um, they're still going to be like, hey, mom, hey, mom, hey, mom, like the little dog in um, yeah. in uh, those those old cartoons. Tom, yeah, like those old Tom and Jerry. Yes. The, the and big bulldog and the little one. Like they're, they need something <laughs> when um, when you're, you're engaged because they feel your energy gone. So Jenna says, so much yes. Ella loves to test her dad. He is struggling to hold the space as well as to find ways to connect and discipline. I think that you said two important things there, Jenna. I think when you connect... You don't have to discipline as much mm -hmm. because you're you're making that connection there. They will if you have a plan, and it doesn't have to be like oh I planned everything out like in my weird choleric way. Like just a plan. Like when I'm alone with the kids, we're gonna read books, or when I'm alone with the kids, we're gonna play Uno. When I'm alone, you know whatever it is. If you have a plan to enroll your child um, in you know what it is in, that Dad wants to do with them, then you won't have a discipline issue generally. Generally. And la later on, I mean, with, this is really funny, but later on when we had small kids and like teenager, almost adult kids in the house at the same time, and if you were gone, I would have the older kids take issue with how I was holding the space right. with the younger they ones. They would even text me and tattle on him. And I'll say, you know what, he's, my job is to say, he's got it under control. I don't need to hear about it. And sometimes they, they may have had a point. We I just know. had this recently where you were, you, I, it was right before our launch. And, and we had a Disneyland day plan because we live in Southern California. We had a Disneyland day plan and I knew that was not where I needed to be. And so Eric took, them, he took our old adult son and Sam and Soraya and they went. And this is what I hear from Harry. She would not be pulling this if you were here. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> okay, well, but I'm not. So it's okay. It's okay. So when you, ha I think it's really important when you, your kids get older and they start to report to you, you just go, that's okay. I know he can handle it. Or that's okay. She's got it under control. Because the tattling is this divide and conquer thing that I think they do subconsciously without even knowing. And it goes back to my whole theory called who's got my boob. Yeah. And the who's got my boob theory is it doesn't matter how many children you have. It doesn't matter how old they are. They will always vie for your attention, mom. Always. Like I have watched it in adult children. Like I, every time we're around all of your siblings, they, all, they only want to talk to his mother. <laughs> they don't want to talk to anybody else. They don't want to talk to your dad. It's all, and then they all, it's not just... It's just one person that wants to talk to your mom. They all want to talk to his mom at the same time. And so as your children become adults, you sort of see it. And it will be very interesting because we have one child that doesn't want to talk to me at all right now. But it will be very interesting when everybody else is trying to talk to me if she actually wants to talk to me during that time period. Because I think that there is this, um, this energy difference between mom and dad. And you know, we live in this culture where they want to make everything the same. And everybody holds a different energy. And so, you, you know, you kind of want to own that and be okay with that and, and find healthy ways to express that, find healthy ways to, you know, have, have fun with your children. And, and I think often when dad's gone at work all day, I mean, you used to be that dad that was gone all day. You have to consciously think about, well, what are we going to do? That's not yeah. like just a video game or that's not like just a movie. You have to consciously think about 
well, what is it that they would want to do? And what is it that what they would want to do with me that's different than what they're doing with mom all day? Yeah. Um, what would you say, um, from a dad's perspective of like understanding the difference between like, like seeing it, palpably seeing it, what happens between when you hold it and when you don't? It's, there's a chaotic energy and there's an energy of kids that aren't feeling secure. Yeah, because then when they're not feeling secure, they tend to question everything. Yeah. And they tend to do things that they wouldn't do when they do feel secure. And I think there's just a few little tweaks. What would you tell another dad? Like, if, he, if you had a dad say to you, so what are, what are the secrets? Yeah. What would you say? It's being, being present, being mindful, listening to what's going on around you, keying in on what their emotions are. Right. Um, keying into what things they're saying to each other and to you. Um, because then you know, because what, what the message you're getting is, hey, I don't feel safe or I don't know what's going on. I need to yeah. feel better, especially like when they're younger or, or when not necessarily that they're little toddlers, but when they're, they're big enough that they start to wonder about the things around them. Today, um, Soraya, because we had to go pick I don't something know what up. I was going to say. Well, today, <laughs> you know, when we, I had to pick something up on the other side of the border. Right, today. right. Um, and I have Eric goes to Mexico to get my blood pressure medication because it's cheaper there than it is here. It's, and not, it's, like actually this, it's not like this crazy deal. No, I'm not got, doing something he, illegal. He just goes but, to And it actually is better stuff than like It is better stuff. So, in about once a month, sometimes we have dentist appointments down yeah. there and things like we that. We like Mexico so, go often. Um, I'm, we're walking to the border and she's asking me all these questions that she doesn't normally ask. Like, a, what what point are we in Mexico and what point are we in the United States? That and line right what there. What happens if you have a, like, do you have passports? What happens if we don't have passports? Why do those people get to go in that line and we have to go in this line? Yeah, because there's two lines. There's a line for foreigners, which would be us, and then lines for Mexicans. You just walk citizens. through and you don't have to talk to somebody. Right. But, you know, on the other way, and yet, no matter who you are, you have to answer a bunch of questions. But... <laughs> And then, then we get to the other side. He loves that part. <laughs> we get to the other <laughs> side, and she's like, Dad, why don't the birds need passports? Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. And I said, well, birds are more free than people are. And she got really quiet. <laughs> oh, she's also, because she does her name, so she's thinking so much. So much thinking. Um, so much is going on in her head. But that told me that she wasn't sure what was happening and she wasn't sure of her surroundings. So she was asking questions and about her surroundings. If you had been buried in your phone, she probably would have acted up instead of asking questions. Just zoned out or right. just not paying attention or ignoring her, then it would have escalated to more and more things, you know. I think that whenever you're going to a place like that, because I think, you know, that's kind of, it's not an extreme, but it's kind of like an, most people aren't going to be like going to Mexico every day. No. But I think that when you're just out with kids, you have to think about where you're going, what you could encounter, and always have an exit strategy. Well, I, I, always have an exit strategy. I mean, I end up being the one that usually takes them to grocery store trips. Usually I'm the one that takes them. Right. And often we sit down and I... I grocery shop for a lot of years. He can do it. It's all good. And often I make, <laughs> you know, a Google Keep list with check boxes. Right. Because we've talked about what the menu is going to be for the right. week and what we need. And so I know what we're getting and I'll get to the store and I'll say, look, kids, this is my list. This is what we're here to get. We're not here to get anything other than what's on this list. talking to you about Nutella. And then I know mom told me that you should put Nutella on the list. <laughs> that only happened actually one time when I actually did ask him to put Nutella on the list. Yeah. But and, they, they milk it every time. And um, so this is what we got to do. And uh, we got to get what's on this list. I need you guys to help me. Right. And uh, let's get this Because that helps them know. You know, I think often in our adult uh, minds... Um, and I think that this probably is is something that dad would struggle with more than mom because we're with them all day and we take them places generally, except for in your case where you're home with them. Often dad's like, but I don't have to think about anybody else five days a week. And now I have to think about these other children, these other people. And I have to think about 
what, you know, what things to, to um, worry about. But guess what? When you put thought to those things, then you don't have tantrums. Yeah. The first thing that I would say too, when mom gets ready to leave and hands off holding the space to you, dad, is the first thing you should say is, when was the last time these people ate? Yeah. <laughs> because if she forgets to tell you, you need to ask. Because if you don't ask, it's going to be, um, that, that should be the first thing you cue in on. When things start to fall apart, you need to go, huh? Hang Y'all need a snack? Hangriness or... <laughs> yeah. I usually that, carry I a fruit bar or applesauce or something in my bag. And then there's what we call the I'm thirsty monster, I'm where it's just monster. out of the blue. It's like, I cannot live. The I'm thirsty monster is a real entity. I cannot. I call it the I'm thirsty monster because it's like, I can't live another minute without water. Where's the water? We have had children try water. to enact violence over the I'm thirsty <laughs> monster. I'm like, hold up. You still got spit in your mouth? Calm down. <laughs> another thing, too, I would say is, you know... Melissa and I, we do a lot of people watching when we're out. We do. And we live in this big city, and there's lots of different people to watch. And I think one thing that happens is I see parents that are asking permission from their kids to do things. That's a big hot button for me. And then... I just want to go, <laughs> stop that. Then once you've handed over, because there's holding the space, but then... There's another element of when you hand over control. Well, I do think there is a parenting method that um, that I ha and I'm not going to mention it here, um, out of respect for them. But there is a parenting method where you give kids a lot of choices, mm -hmm. and that's a really bad idea. I'm just going to say, never give them a, a couple of things. Don't ever give them a choice that you, you wouldn't be okay with. Like, don't ever give a consequence that you're not going to follow through on and don't give choices that you're not okay with. Don't go, you can have this candy or this candy if you really don't want them to have candy at all. Um, and so you don't want to give too many choices and be very firm in those choices. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I want to tackle this because I think this is a good one. Yes. So, um, how do I address the issue of not holding the space with your partner? It's difficult to sit on the sidelines and watch it all go down without overruling dad when he is, when he is in charge of the time. Um, and then this mom says, I have to employ prayer for this so I don't undermine my husband and wait for a moment that feels right to bring up the topic um, or an invitation. Yeah, absolutely, Lauren. That is absolutely what one of the things would be that I would say. The other thing, I, I mean, here's the thing. Dad knows if it went to hell. <laughs> you know, and I know. And so we're, we're comfortable enough with each other to say, I think if they had eaten, that probably wouldn't have happened. And he's like, yeah, I know. Or he'll say the same thing to me. You know, they didn't eat. <laughs> what? Or, or they probably, she probably could use a walk. Because I may not be cued into it. I may be trying to be present, but I'm not completely present. Once it fell up part and it's fallen apart I call that when you do the crime scene investigation, investigation. it's like okay so this yeah. happened and before that this happened right and before that this happened and then and then okay I, this is where it started to go and I had an opportunity right. to correct it here and I had an opportunity to correct it there and I had an opportunity and now I'm here one of the things that we've gotten really good at saying to each other is do you want to talk about that like after the after it's all happened because nine times out of ten, he's like, no, because I know where it fell apart. Or I'll say, no, because I know where it fell apart. Like, because we're really good at that with each other. If not, if you're not in that place, I would absolutely say, honey, I saw what just happened. Do you want me to, do you want to talk about that? Do you want me to give you some input? If he says no, then, then you just step away. The next time it happens, say it again. Would you like some input on that? I've really been working on holding the space and, you know, I have these great coaches, Melissa and Eric, and they talk about holding the space all the time. Would you like to watch this video with me? I think that's a really good way, like, especially because, Jenna, I know that you're, um, you're a Thinking, Feeling, Willing member, so I would grab the Thrive videos on holding the space. Um, I think that it's important to support your partner at all costs. The only time I would say step in is if your partner is hurting your child. Then you step in for sure. 
but that is not the case most of the time. If your partner's making you uncomfortable, that's not the same as hurting your child. You can absolutely have a conversation later. Like you could say, um, and I've never had to say this to Eric for sure, but you can absolutely say, you know what, I don't want you to ever talk to a child that way again. We're gonna have to have words about that and then talk about it. And not just when you say hurting, it's not just physical hurting. No, it's emotional hurting You're saying hurting too. like things that are like, yeah. I mean, and that's something we've talked. Yeah, to my mouth gets about. out of control sometimes. Everybody, everybody has a time when they need a timeout. What's great is when my mouth starts to go, Eric can hold me on the arm, like just it's just gentle. Just take my arm, and I and then I can shut up and I walk away. <laughs> and he that's his cue like he's like oh need to step in here um i have also really been working on like for the last 10 years on because of my temperament my temperament is like i could bark and it doesn't bother me and somebody thinks i'm yelling and i'm like i wasn't yelling that wasn't yelling i could yell for you though if you'd like um so i am really good at being able to say this is going to come from you much better than it is for me and it was funny because you said last last week he talked to our adult son and he was like, mom must be really mad if she said she no, instead it, of me. It wasn't last week, but it was like back when he moved in with us. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And uh, it got to where he knew that he had stepped in it big when it was me that had to do the talking right. to him. Because he knew. Because you were like, I can't do this. You need to do it. And he's like, oh man, I really must have stepped in it if you're coming. And I wasn't he, mean or... No, top, because but, you're the same temperament, but, but he like, knows well, that if I for you to do it. if I have to go in and and uh, retcon something or uh, clean something up, it won't be pretty. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. Um, but I also know what I shouldn't shouldn't say because I'm a grown up and I can pay attention. So if, if this is a brand new concept to you, then then the things that you say would might be. Hey, you know, I was listening to this video today. And this concept of holding the space really intrigued me. Um, you know, I know that like when you and I are in the room together, I can feel your presence. I think the kids can feel us too. Like open dialogue, have a conversation about it. And, and s instead of, um, you know, instead of assuming that they know what you're talking about. If I say holding the space nine to, to, to 10 people that don't know anything about Waldorf or anything about the work that we do, they, they would go, what are you talking about? So you have to sort of, you know, front load that with that. Uh, I'm learning about something and I think it's really interesting. And I've been trying it at home while you're gone all day. And what I'm finding is that when I'm trying it at home, it, it really works when I hold the space. So I was thinking that maybe you and I could talk about how to hold the space together when we're both home together. And, and really sort of like coming at it from that way. I don't know. Do you have any other like, do you have any thoughts for men that are like, I don't want to hear this. They should, I, I love this one. They should just listen to me. <laughs> You're right, they should. However, they're not gonna. So, <laughs> do you wanna continue to beat your head against the wall or do you wanna actually do something that is proactive? There's, there's a place that you have to find in yourself where you're willing to be humble about some things. Yeah, and parenting is a Humbling. humbling with yourself yeah. and your partner and kids aren't just going to listen because you're the dad that would be nice but that does not if you think about when you were a kid, well i was just, just going to say <laughs> did that ever work for your parents <laughs> you like think about when you were a kid but anytime my mom said because i said so i'd be like oh really let's me think about how that could not be <laughs> and i would say if you're resistant to finding ways to hold the space and to be present and find ways to avoid conflict. You just compare what things are like now to what you'd like them to be. And that sometimes involves doing some things that are uncomfortable or that it, it does like mess with your pride a little bit. But, and that's not meaning you have to compromise on who you are or anything like that. It just means like there are certain things that if you want things to be a certain way, there are certain things that you have to do to make them that way. Right, because I think, again, we're not raising children. We're, we're helping, we're developmentally walking through this path to adulthood. And you didn't learn just by somebody telling you one time. You learned by somebody systematically, either good or bad, teaching you over time. Mm -hmm. 
So you have to be willing to be in the space of teacher, not just homeschool teacher. But I think when it's a when some when a mom says to me, "Oh, I'm homeschooling," that whole family is homeschooling, not just mom. So it's it's something that is mom and dad and and even grandma sometimes everybody's involved in that. And so being able to talk about things and really truly communicate is what's so so important about um, you know this path and that's what helps you be successful is when you're you're willing to step step aside and go, you know, I'm learning here. I'm trying to sort this out. Sometimes what I find when there's this going on with mom and dad about, you know, learning is if mom says, you know, honey, you may have this parenting thing all figured out, but I don't. So I'm learning. That often takes dad off the hook because then he can go, oh, see here all this time, I thought she knew everything and she doesn't know everything and it's okay for us to both be learning together. Yes. Because I think often dads think, oh, well, she's with this child all day. She knows everything. She does all the reading. She knows everything and I don't know anything. And really and truly, when you can both come to a place of, we're both learning. And, and I welcome you to read the stuff that, that I've been reading. And I, I'll, you know, come to you if you'll come to me. I think that that's really the healthiest place to be. Anything else? I think we're good. But there's plenty more to talk about. But there's plenty we could more to be here all day. We could be all day. So we sure. shouldn't be here all day. We shouldn't. Because we're going to have some <laughs> hangry people if we're not careful. Um, again, this is this much of what we cover in our Thinking, Feeling, Willing program. If you have enjoyed this conversation at all, you should highly consider becoming a member. Later.